What's up everybody, JJ here, and hopefully today we're gonna to be fixing the final issue I've been having with my Voron V0.1, the extruder. I've been having just really inconsistent extrusions, and today we're gonna to be installing the Orbiter V2.0. Now the stock mini afterburner extruder that you build for this printer, I love the looks of it, and I hate to see it go, but it just really hasn't been giving me great results. You can see on a lot of parts, just inconsistent areas where it's over extruding and then under extruding. It shows up as artifacts throughout a print in random ways. And I'm fairly certain the extruder is to blame for that. And I do think some of the issues I've been having is because it's not printed super well. And every time I've had to take it apart and put it back together because of a clog or the fan wire comes off or various reasons, I've had to take it off and put it back on a lot and each time I think it gets worse and worse. And so after months of having issues with it, and then a couple months of not even using it because it was so much issue to deal with, I want an extruder that comes out of the box and I can just put on here and get great results out of it. That's the goal at least with this extruder. And there's a few other reasons why I went with this extruder and I did wanna cover them for anyone else who was thinking about replacing an extruder or really any extruder with a small lightweight direct drive extruder. There's four really common lightweight direct drive extruders that people use and I wanted to cover why I chose this one over those other options. So your four options are the Orbiter V2, the Orbiter V1.5, the Sherpa Mini, and the Bontech LGX Lite. Now I have heard really great things out of all of those options, so I think they're all gonna be really great extruders, and they can be great for the right person. I'm gonna go over why I chose this one, and if you are interested in a deep dive of the design behind this extruder, the creator put out this amazing article that goes through some of their testing and decision making between different things. It's a fascinating read for anyone who's interested in the math behind extruders. This one is designed from the ground up to be injection molded instead of 3D printed. The previous version was designed to be 3D printed, but then there were some people who made it injection molded. So since they designed this one specifically to be injection molded, they could change the design around a lot and it's way different. The V2 is much lighter weight. It's 135 grams over the V1.5's 150 grams. That's compared to the LGX Lite at 141 grams. And the Sherpa Mini, I think, is around 122 grams. With that one, I could only find an exact number in one place, so it might be slightly different from that, but it definitely seems like the lightest out of the options. The V2's design is also 11.6% shorter, and the filament path is closer to the center of mass. They say that's better for Delta printers. So if you're looking for an option for Delta printers, this might be a great option. They also say the new motor design is also 40% stronger filament pushing force than the previous design, so that's really impressive. Hopefully we can get some really high speeds out of this extruder. They're also using new drive gears that are 12 millimeters in diameter versus the standard eight millimeters that's used on a lot of other designs. The LGX is the only other one that uses bigger gears and that uses 18 millimeter gears. There's a whole section on his article going over the design decision to go with the 12 instead of going up to the 18 because you're sacrificing weight over performance. It seems like the 12 millimeters is kind of that sweet spot right in the middle. The V2 also uses a stainless steel filament exit guide with a 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter clearance between the gears. This should improve performance when using flexible filaments so the filament can't divert out of that straight path. And that might have been an issue I was having with printing flexibles on the mini afterburner. Also with that part being stainless steel, they say it should last longer if you're using abrasive filaments fairly often. Now when it comes to price of these, they seem all really similar. This one I was able to pick up for $65. And I found a lot of the other ones, if they're injection molded and pre-assembled, they came in around 65 to 70, depending on where you found them. And then if you're 3D printing it yourself, you can buy little kits of all the parts and gears you need for around 30 to 40, seems like, from different retailers. So price-wise, at least, they're all really similar options. So I think overall, my big reason for choosing the V2, it seems like the right balance between high performance and low weight. I'm also really excited to try a good flexible filament extruder. The mini afterburner, I've been struggling so much, and I've been trying to print wheels for various RC projects. So hopefully I'll be getting some really good prints out of this extruder. So here it is, pretty basic, out of the box, simple, put together, ready to go. This wire we're gonna need to trim down a little bit smaller. Another nice thing that comes in this box is this amazing little startup guide that goes through, that goes through all of your parameters. You could set it through the RepRap firmware configuration, the Clipper firmware configuration, 
the Marlin configuration. It's just really nice to have all of these settings in a sheet of paper ready to go with the extruder. I also got the parts printed out. The assembly of this should be way easier for anyone who doesn't want to build a mini afterburner or struggled with it. This has two parts you print out. One will have this mounted on top and the other part was what attaches to the X carriage linear rail. So first thing to do, we're gonna get the soldering iron heated up. We have four heat set inserts. We need to insert into these parts. And while that's heating up, I think I can go ahead and start taking the mini afterburner off of this printer. And then pretty much just undo all of these front screws. So hopefully I'll still be able to use these same belts, but I did get a pack of spare belts just in case these are too short to be able to get working again. Since we're installing a dragon hot end, we're going to use this and this hole. If you're using a dragon fly, use this hole and this hole. Nice and secure. And that's all there is to it. So we can now stick the PTFE, make sure it's snug all the way down in there. And we need seven millimeters sticking out of the top. If you can get a good mark on it, you can take it to the edge of the table. Make sure it's secure down in there. Remeasure. That's pretty spot on right what we're going for. The next thing I wanted to do is reverse this motor orientation to have the plugs coming out on top of the motor like it's listed in a lot of the listings online. Instead of here, it's oriented to the bottom. So you can see the planetary gears in there and it's all nice and lubed up so I don't want to disturb it. So there we go. Now the wires are sticking out on top. So I'm just going to reuse these same spacers that I used on the mini afterburner. Ideally, I would have lengthened them, but I think we can just use longer screws and it should work fairly well. So now the installation here is super easy. You just slide the PTFE tubing in there and then we'll put our screws in place. Just using two M3 by 10 bolts to hold the extruder to the hot end. That is secure in place and pretty much ready to go. This looks pretty good, the whole black and teal color scheme. Now all we need are two M3 by 35 bolts. Those will go straight through the front here and hold this onto the X carriage. So there we have it. It's mostly together. I didn't tighten things all the way down. I do think I'm gonna just test things out. And I left the, and I left the belts nice and long over here just in case Things need to be changed. This is just initial testing. Now this is what I wanted my printer to be five months ago when I built it. It's high speed, high quality, small printer, and it's working so well with this new extruder. It's been so much fun to start printing really fast on this printer. I was printing these benchies. This is a 20 minute benchy. And now my biggest problem is cooling on this printer. And that's a whole nother thing I can still work on. Probably taking off these panels, adding extra fans. There's so many different methods out there for cooling, but I'm so glad that now the issues of it, the extruder, are fixed. So when it comes to the issues I was having before, the artifacting that was showing up on prints is now gone. Also, I'm able to print way faster. Before, it would always start skipping and couldn't really push filament hard enough to really go fast. So now this printer is really living up to the hype that I was expecting out of it. I wanted a printer that I could print small things with very quickly. This little print is a great example of it. It's a print that will hold an accelerometer that mounts straight onto the hot end and it does some accelerating tests 
So that way we can use Clipper to balance out the frequency and vibrations to the print. But something small like this, I think it took eight minutes to print something like this because it's so quick. So it's amazing to be able to prototype little things like this so quickly. Another big benefit to having your extruder already pre-assembled is the installation is so quick. There's two, four, six screws total. Instead of before, there's all these printed parts and all the exact ways you have to get them to fit together, getting all the gears fit together correctly. This is so quick. I recorded myself once putting it all together. And then I realized one of the fan wires had broken off the part cooling fans. So then I had to take it all the way apart again, resolder that wire, put it all together again. And it was so quick. It took me maybe 30 minutes to do all of that. And it was so easy to do. Before, that would have taken me so much longer and have been such a huge pain to deal with. I would have had to put it off until a day that I could devote a good amount of time to taking it all the way apart, getting the fans out, resoldering it together. So now this makes working on the printer so much easier. So now I guess the question comes up of who is this extruder for? Who would I recommend it for? If you've got a mini afterburner on your Voron and it's printing well, just keep using that. I think if what you have is working, keep using it. But if what you have isn't working or something broke or you're building a printer for the first time and you don't want to go through all this hassle, maybe this will be a great option for you. Maybe spending a little bit more to get a pre-assembled extruder would be better than a lot of hassle, months of troubleshooting. Personally, I kind of wish I had skipped to that, but also I did learn a lot of building the mini afterburner initially and how extruders work and go together. Maybe I'm not too disappointed that I did build this initially, but I am so glad that I now have this one on here. Now that I have this extruder on here, I know this printer is capable of a 10 minute benchy. I've just got to do the tuning to get it all perfectly calibrated and working correctly. I'm also not totally done using 3D printed extruders. Now that this one is working really well, I would love to try out printing a mini Sherpa. I've got all these parts and the little motor that I need. I would love to try putting direct drive on some of my other 3D printers. And if you're interested in any future videos like that, the best way to help me out is hitting that like and subscribe button down below. I know it's common for YouTubers to keep pushing that, but it really does help us out a lot. Also, if you have any questions about this installation or how it's running or testing different things, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you on that. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.